place to live. And meanwhile, the landlords, the property developments, the property developers and the banks, they're raking it in. I'm Yasmin, I'm one of the education officers at the Sydney University SRC. Uh, I've been part of fights for student rights for years now, uh, including the fight for our right to protest when that was being attacked in 2020. But I'll introduce you to my co-chair now, Harrison. Hello all, I'm Harrison. I'm the UCID Wealth Officer for 2023. I think we can all see, based on the turnout here today, that housing is a real ongoing problem in this country, especially in New South Wales. And we have been presented with two options for Parliament that present no viable and proper solution to solving the housing crisis. Um, I'll start by introducing a developer the country, so I'd love to welcome Carolyn Anna from Action Public Housing to come up, up here in the Indian country. Hi everybody, um, I'm a Wiradjuri person, um, my pronouns are they, them, and um, I'm going to do this in my language, um, and I'll translate. Yiridu Marang, Yuwindu Carolyn, Nadu Banigul Gulbara Gadigal, Mayingalang, Nadu Banigul Mujigangul, Biambulgul, Maradalbul, Yandalbul, Yinjamaninjul, Nulaway, Gunana, Mandangulwu. Basically, I just said, hello, my name is, um, and uh, that I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people. Um, I would like to acknowledge all the elders, past, present, and also respect them for a long time. And then I said, thank you. So, as I said, I'm a First Nations um, person. Um, I'm also an artist and a rapper, um, and I'm a public housing tenant. Public housing is something that is really important to promote because um, it's not just a place for marginalised people. It's supposed to be for mixed. So anybody should be able to get public housing, whether it's be whether it be for a short time or a long time, it doesn't matter. In many countries, public housing is um, a much larger percentage of where we have here on this continent. I won't call it Australia because this is unceded land. This is not Australia, it's an illegal occupation. At no point did any of us say, yeah, take over. So um, this is a continent, it is not a country. I come from a country and there's over 400 countries on this continent. So always keep that in mind, wherever you are, you are on Aboriginal land, unceded land, and we're still at war, this is an occupation. So where I'm living, it's a very urgent thing. We're getting moved out right now. 50% of the people on, in my estate have left already, or as I put it, evicted already. They claim that we're going to get two choices. Um, really, I don't think it's even a choice. Really what it is, it's eviction, because they will state where we're going to go. Of course, I have Redfern Legal Centre on my side at the moment and they're helping me, but every step of the way, they've made it really, really difficult. And some people will just give up and they would rather rough sleep than put up with this shit. Um, I was a private renter also a long time ago and uh, I became disabled. So uh, that's how I ended up in public housing, but it was quite some years before that even happened. I had to struggle, I had to even make threats in order to get a public housing place. Shame. It's absolute shame. It is ridiculous what I've had to go through. I had to say, I know where the minister is, I'm gonna show him exactly how sick I am. I'm going to camp out in his office, on a mattress, and you'll see exactly how sick I am because if I don't get enough sleep, I vomit, I fall, all sorts of things can happen. And people shouldn't be resorted, um, shouldn't have to resort to such extreme measures. 
So um, I'm really glad to see a lot of people bring up this subject because anybody, whether you be students or anybody else, should have public housing. Not this nonsense community housing crap and social housing crap. That is privatisation. And they, they cherry pick who they want to live in their um, estates, which is completely wrong. You know, we should all have the choice if we want to live in public housing because there are people that work in public housing people that are students in public housing but all of that is being diminished because they're also not taking people off the general wait list they're actually only housing people um, that are on the priority list which is ridiculous you know, they're not building more housing, they're not refurbishing housing, they're selling off public housing. It's disgusting. So you should all have the choice to live in public housing if you want to. Um, you know, I think it's in Singapore, they have over 81% of, um, of all, what, what would you call it, places that you can rent are their public housing. So why on this continent is it such a small number? It is ridiculous. I'm not even sure what it is, but I think it's something like 3%, which is basically the percentage of um, Aboriginal people on this continent, you know? So and it's another form of colonization. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'll hand it over to the next person. I want to acknowledge that this rally is taking place on unceded land. Always was, always will be. I think it's also, you know, shameful to hear actually about the way public housing tenants are being treated in this country and about the fact that hundreds of thousands of people are now on public housing wait lists and yet public housing is not being built uh, to the extent that is necessary. And so some people are totally unable to access this. Uh, housing should be a human right and not something that is produced for profit. But I want to read now a statement from somebody who actually couldn't be here today. Some people in the crowd might have heard about this case. Cherish Coolman is a student at uh, the University of New South Wales. She's the education officer there at the SRC. And Cherish was arrested last week for protesting for affordable housing. The reason she can't be here tonight is because the police imposed bail conditions on her that mean that she can't enter a radius for within two kilometres of town hall. Yay. So I want to read to you what she has to say to the crowd tonight. The New South Wales Police came to my house and detained me at midnight last Friday on a charge of aggravated trespass because I'd organised a protest for housing justice that afternoon. I was taken into custody before being released at 4am in the morning. The charge is serious. A guilty verdict carries a maximum penalty of 12 months in prison or a $13,200 fine. Hey. This is an intimidation tactic by the police. Yeah. The student protest earlier that day caught rallied outside the Reserve Bank of Australia in Martin Place, demanding immediate measures to ease the housing crisis, including rent caps and higher taxes on corporations to pay for public housing. Low-income renters and struggling homeowners are feeling the worst effects of the housing crisis. Landlords are jacking up rents or refusing to open their investment properties to renters at all. More than 16,400 properties in the Greater Sydney area sit empty, while 163,000 people are on social housing wait lists across the state. Meanwhile, the big four banks have raked in record profits from interest on ballooning household debt. Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe recently told the Senate estimates hearing that the country is better off from having strong, resilient, effective banks. Yeah. Better off for who? Better off for the rich and powerful who are benefiting in this crisis. Yeah. The bosses, the bank owners, the wealthy landlords and the federal and state governments who back these people up. And the, this attack on me, this is not an isolated attack on our democratic right to protest. In 2022, the Perrottet Liberal government passed the Roads and Crimes Legislation Amendment Bill Shame. with the support of the ALP. Shame. Shame! These new laws make it a serious crime to protest on major roads or near major facilities. 
Climate activist Violet Coco was last year sentenced to 15 months in jail, eight without parole, for merely blocking one lane of traffic on the Sydney Harbour Bridge for 25 minutes. And numerous other protesters are currently going through the courts, facing charges for the simple act of fighting for our future. These attacks on democracy have to be publicly opposed and fought. The laws are openly used to intimidate activists, as they were in my case, and pose a threat to anyone trying to fight for a better world. We're going to keep up the campaign against the banks, the government and the landlords, which is why it's so positive to see students and housing justice campaigners out here rallying tonight. I look forward to organising future protests to demand that housing be treated as a human right and not a commodity. Also go on Facebook and social media and share that petition around. It'll be really helpful to sort of um, putting public pressure on the government to clearly change their mind and the police as well. Um, next speaker we have is Karen Brown from Action Public Housing and Woolley Public Housing, an amazing speaker who spoke I think a week or two ago at the public housing rally. Um, welcome on board. I'd also like to acknowledge that we're on Gallagher land and that, that land was stolen. Um, on that note, I'd just tell you that I'm from Waterloo next to Redfern and First Nations people are being dispossessed there all over again. From a population of about 10,000 a few years ago, there's now about 700 and they're going to be evicted again when Waterloo Public Housing gets demolished. Yay. When they hand it over to developers. Everyone on a low income is being forced out of areas that are de deemed desirable. From Waterloo to Katoomba, from Batemans Bay to Byron, if you can't afford it, it's too good for you. The, the perception is that poor equals lazy and therefore undeserving. It sounds mean because it is. But everyone everywhere wants shops, cafes, restaurants, hospitals and childcare. They need cleaners, garbos and bus drivers not to mention volunteers. Sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> volunteers who, I'll just add, around the country, they deliver food, they do bush generation, they hold your hand when you go to court. The estimated dollar value of volunteers is $40 billion a year. So not so lazy. So-called affordable housing might suit some with a secure permanent full-time job, but it is based on a portion of market rent, not of income. Yeah. Not suitable for part-time work, for project or event-based work in the arts sector or the well-known gig economy. So please, no more unaffordable housing. Yeah. For years now, there has been scaffolding and cranes all over Greater Sydney. Look at us building the shit out of the housing crisis, it says, but they're not. The housing crisis is getting worse as all their, most of the apartments they're building aren't for living in, but for selling. Investors will buy it. They don't, they don't need tenants. They just need somewhere to park their money. The government must stop this. They should be penalised for keeping empty apartments and banned from buying any more. The market is never going to fix the problems with housing or the lack of it. It's obvious. It's up to the government to do it. Look at what sort of housing is needed and where, then spend the money to deliver it instead of spending money on replacing football stadiums and building bridges to nowhere. Housing is a fundamental need and proper planning should have it as a priority. More public housing is a good start. More public housing means more opportunities for more people. The waiting list for public housing is well over 50,000. 
The priority waiting list is 6,000. That's people with serious health problems, drug problems, mental illness, or over 80 years old. If, you, if you're not one of those people, you'll have to wait more than 10 years. This government has sold $4 billion worth of public housing. They claim the money is to build more. They have built only 3,000 new homes. We need tens of thousands more public homes built, operated and maintained by the government so more people can have the security to thrive. So public housing has a true diversity of tenants. The people need more public housing. Public housing needs more people. Demand it.